Today is going to be an introduction to guardianships. What are they? How are they initiated? Who can be a guardian? What do they do? And how do we end them? My name is Gregory Singleton. I'm an estate planning and probate attorney with Signature Law. Signature Law is an estate planning and probate law firm that serves the Twin Cities and Greater Minnesota alike. Just as a reminder, if you like today's video, please feel free to hit that like and subscribe button. It actually really helps support the channel. Also, two caveats before we get going. First of all, uh, this video is for educational purposes only. I'm not giving legal advice. And second of all, we're going to be talking about Minnesota law and statutes specifically in this video. So if you're in another jurisdiction, the law may be dramatically different. So what is a guardian? Very simply, a guardian is a person appointed by a court to manage another person's health and bodily autonomy, when that other person is unable to do so for themselves. The legal definition is under Minnesota Statute 524.5-602D. Essentially, it's a person appointed by the court to make decisions regarding the person of another adult. And a person, in quotes, generally is the individual's health and bodily autonomy. Autonomy. Now, well, just a little bit of verbiage before we get going. We no longer call the person who is under a guardianship a ward of the guardian. We just say it's a person, an individual under guardianship. Now, what does a guardian do? There's a lot of things a guardian can be responsible for. They're under Minnesota Statute 524.5-313. They can establish the uh, place of abode for an individual to provide support and care. Uh, and maintenance for the individual. They can uh, do property maintenance. They can do medical care and consent for it. That's kind of a big one, consenting to medical care and making medical decisions when there's no healthcare agent. If there's no conservator, they can take on certain conservator duties. They can form able accounts for the individual. Now, there are a lot of uh, limitations. Uh, the primary one, primary one being that a court order establishing the guardianship will establish what authority the guardian has. Now, there are certain things that a guardian cannot do. For instance, they cannot restrict visitation, interaction, or communication with others. They're not there to control the life of the person. We're there to support and make certain decisions for them. Also, you can't uh, restrict uh, an individual's right to vote unless it's by order of the court. There's a number of other things, for instance, specific medical procedures that also require order of the court. Now, while someone is under a guardianship, the guardian is required to make a whole lot of reports to the court on a regular basis, or either on a regular basis or when certain events happen. Uh, the court maintains broad jurisdiction. Specifically, quote, a guardian shall be subject to the control and direction of the court at all times and in all things, end quote. The guardian is essentially working as an agent an appointed agent of the court to fulfill their duties. Now, how is a guardianship initiated? Well, it, it's initiated by petition of the court. This is a court hearing. It may be contested uh, where the person that is maybe subject to guardianship says, I don't need the guardianship, or the person that's subject to guardianship may be unable or unwilling to contest. Now, to establish uh, a guardianship, the petition by a person interested in the welfare of the individual under guardianship, uh, the court has to have proven to them by clear and convincing evidence two things. First, the respondent, the person who may be subject to the guardianship, has to be d deemed incapacitated. And that may require bringing it, usually requires bringing in a bunch of medical testimony and other witnesses that know the individual. It can be a complicated matter. Uh, it also requires, under proof of clear and convincing evidence, that the individual's needs cannot be met by less restrictive means. So what does less restrictive means entail? That could be anything from technological assistance to community and residential services to health appointment of a healthcare agent or to uh, supported decision-making. And we're gonna have another video on supported decision-making. It's, I would say new, but it is relatively new to Minnesota and what that can mean. So who can be a guardian? Well, first of all, it's under the court's discretion. Now there is a priority list of the person who has primary priority and then successor priority after that, but the court has the right to skip over someone if they think it's in the best interest of the individual and of having a successful guardianship. Now, the priority is going to be the current guardian, then the healthcare agent, 
spouse, adult child, parent, adult roommate who's lived with the individual for at least six months, uh, a related adult by blood adoption or marriage, or any other adult. But remember, it has to be an individual that has is legitimately interested in that individual's welfare. How do you end or modify a guardianship? There's several ways. First of all, a guardianship can come to a natural end. Uh, the person under guardianship can die, then the guardianship obviously ends. It can expire. Perhaps the order of the court establishing the guardianship says this guardianship will exist for three years only, and at the end of three years, it will naturally expire. Or if the court has reason, perhaps they're looking at the reports uh, presented by the guardian, the court can say, you know what? On order of the court, the guardianship is terminated or modified. Uh, also, the guardianship can be modified or ended by petition of any interested person, uh, any person interested in the welfare of the individual. That can be to modify the guardianship to either increase the duties of the guardians or to make them less restrictive or just to entirely end it. Uh, and of course, the person of the guardianship can petition as well. And finally, the guardian themselves can petition the court. They can say, you know what, the, uh, the individual in the guardianship, they're fine, they don't need my help, or maybe it's just not working out and we need to get a new guardian or modify it in some way. So that's a brief introduction to guardianships, the laws surrounding the, their creation, their formation, who can be a guardian, what is it, etc. I hope you liked today's video. If you did like today's video, please feel free to hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help support the channel. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or send me an email. We do a new video every other Wednesday. If you have an idea for a video, drop it in the comments or send me an email. Happy to hear it. Otherwise, until next time, this is Gregory Singleton from Signature Law.